So perhaps the following situation will sound familiar to you. You've bought yourself a new storage device, so it could be a hard drive or a USB device, doesn't really matter. And you've installed that device in a computer. And after that, you go to the properties window of your new storage device and you see the capacity. And you notice that the storage capacity that is shown in the properties window in the operating system is a lot lower than the capacity that was shown on the box of the device. That's basically what this video is all about. So as you probably know, a computer converts all the information that goes into it into zeros and ones, so binary. Everything that goes into the computer turns into a certain pattern of zeros and ones. Each one of those zeros and ones is what you call a binary digit or a bit. A bit is an extremely tiny amount of data. It's an even smaller amount of data than a decimal digit. So a decimal digit can have 10 different values, right? Zero all the way to nine. A binary digit or a bit can only have two different values. It's an extremely small amount of data. In fact, it's the smallest possible amount of data. Now in most computer systems, for practical reasons, these bits are grouped up into groups of eight bits, which we call bytes. So a byte is simply a group that consists out of eight zeros or ones. Um, so four bytes is 32 bits and eight bytes is 64 bits. That's how it works. And there is no discussion about that. There is no problem here. Okay, so a byte is always just eight bits. That's perfectly fine. Um, that's not where the problem is. The problem is yet to come. Let's say we have a computer that deals with a very large amount of data. So we could just count the amount of bytes that is stored or processed or whatever this computer does, but that's going to be a massive number. So we might want to use a prefix, so something in front of the word byte that makes it larger. So just like with if you're measuring a, a very long distance, you use kilometer instead of meter because the word kilo makes it a thousand times larger and therefore you don't have to write down this huge number. And we can also do that with bytes. So we can put a prefix in front of the word byte to make it bigger. The first idea might be to just use the word kilo in front of the word byte, which means technically a thousand bytes because kilo means 1000. And then for 1 million bytes, you could use the word mega and, and so on. But computer scientists don't like this. Computer scientists say, well, yes, kilo is 1000, but 1000 is not a nice number to work with for the computer because in binary, 1000 looks like this. It would be better to use the number 1024 because that's, you know, close enough to 1000 so we can still call it kilo. Um, but for the computer, it's a lot better because it's this in binary. So let's use the uh, let's use 1024 bytes as the kilobyte. Now we've got a problem because now we've got two different versions of the kilobyte. We've got the official version, which is a thousand bytes, and we've got the version of the computer scientists who say no, it's 1024 bytes. And this used to cause a lot of confusion because if someone said one gigabyte of data you wouldn't know which version of the gigabyte they meant. So, in 1998, the IEC came up with a new system that was meant to fix all of these problems. And here's what they did. First of all, the standard prefixes, kilo, mega, giga, tera, and so on, those would all have their official meaning. So from now on, the kilobyte would be 1,000 bytes. But they also acknowledged that 1,000 is not a nice number for computers. So what they did is they came up with a new set of prefixes for the 1,024 system. So from now on, 1,024 bytes would be called the kibibyte, byte. And 1,024 kibibyte byte would be the mibibyte. byte and that way it would progress. So great, right? This system fixes all the problems. Now, if you say 
1 gigabyte, you mean 1024 to the power of 3 bytes. And if you say gigabyte, you mean 1000 to the power of 3 bytes. Brilliant. We fixed all the confusion, right? No, the problem is not solved because this system has a major flaw, which is that nobody knows about it. Most people, when they say 1 gigabyte, they actually mean 1024 cubed. They are referring to what should be called the Gibby byte, but they've never heard of the word Gibby byte, so they, they just use gigabyte. That's the problem with the system. It's not popular, it's not common. But hold on, it's not just ordinary people who don't get it right. It's also big programs and even operating systems. For example, the Windows operating system that I've got right here um, does it wrong. So the Windows operating system uses the abbreviation GB, which stands for gigabyte, which would be fine if it measures the amount of data in in actual gigabytes, but the problem is Windows uses the 1024 system. So it should be saying GIB or Gibbybyte. So Microsoft, if you're watching this, please stop doing that, change it, because it's awful. And this also explains why when you install a hard drive, often when you do that, the hard drive manufacturer says 500 gigabytes. And then they will mean, most of the time, sometimes it's not, but most hard drive manufacturers use the 1000 system. So when they say 500 GB, they mean the actual GB. So 500 times 1000 cubed. But the Windows operating system, which uses the wrong abbreviation, doesn't mean GB, it means GIB. It uses the 1024 system. And so when you install that hard drive in your computer, the capacity will be lower because Windows uses a different version of the gigabyte. And again, they should be calling it the Gibby byte, right? They should, they, Microsoft shouldn't be calling this a GB because it's not. And that brings us to the conclusion. The only thing we can do about this, the only thing we can do to make it less confusing is by just all starting to use the right words and the right abbreviations. And in order to make the average Joe do it right, big companies who make, I don't know, the world's most frequently used operating system should start doing it right first. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.